with tonight's message and announcements and stuff like that. Oh, I see Lenny and Lisa, you got your hand raised. If you had something you want to say, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, we wanted to announce our home church tomorrow that's going to be on Zoom. Is this a good time to do that? Sure. Um, we have, we're having our home church here at the house, one o'clock central standard time tomorrow. And my husband, my precious husband, Lenny's going to teach part of the time and Ernie story is going to teach the other part of the time. So, uh, if anyone wants to join, I'll put the zoom link information in the chat or you can email me and I'll email you the link, but 1 PM tomorrow central standard time. Perfect. Yeah. Put the link and then put your email in there too. In case people want to contact you. Thanks. Okay. All right. And then, um, Alex, do you have any announcements you want to make? No, just the one announcement for those of you who are local. We have our Timothy Fellowship tomorrow morning, uh, 9 o'clock breakfast. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll have our Bible study, which will be live streamed through our church website, shorewoodbiblechurch.org. Uh, that central standard time, Aaron Johnson is going to be teaching tomorrow morning. And then the, uh, actually the ladies, they have their uh, ladies fellowship on Sunday. And their Bible study will also be live streamed. Uh, my wife, Sherry, is going to be teaching the lesson on Sunday, and that'll be around 2 o'clock, again, Central Standard Time. Uh, that's about all I've got. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Cynthia, did you want to add anything to that? I don't know, Cynthia and Richard, if you have anything to add. Yeah. With the ladies' meeting, just start looking about 145. So... Because we have lunch and then we start. Last week we were a little earlier starting. Some weeks were later. So to start looking, 145 to 2. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. With that, um, the other only other announcement I had was next, just to give you guys a heads up for next month. So on March, it's going to be the 10th again, March 10th, we're going to have Brother Matt Holly be teaching for, for us. Matt's in... Um, Florida, uh, I'm sorry, not Florida. Uh, Matt is in Ohio. Um, he, he has a church there. I think it's Miami, Ohio. So, um, which will work out really well because Matt and Des Stratum are both uh, going to Africa, I think, this coming week for a missions trip. So they'll be gone for the next couple weeks there. And then in March, uh, when he teaches for us, I'm sure he'll have some, some stories and some information about their trip where he can share that with us and we can get an understanding of what's going on uh, with the missions and that, and that ministry over there in Africa. So keep that in mind for March 10th. And um, uh, let's see, I think that's all we have for announcements. Um, uh, Ted, do you want to open us up in prayer and then we'll let Carl take it away? To unmute yourself. Our Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to gather this evening. We thank you for the technology that allows us to uh, to connect and uh, to fellowship with folks in so many different places at so many different times. We thank you for the uh, the life and the truth that that we come together around in the person of our Savior, and we just pray for a blessed time this evening. May the word of God have free course in our hearts and lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Ted. All right, Carl, I am going to um, hit the record button here real quick. Recording in progress. And Carl, if you want to take it away, it's all yours. Just unmute yourself and then, you know, tell us how you, you're doing, how the family's doing, and, and then the floor is yours. Thanks, Ben. Uh, firstly, can everybody hear me? Okay, great. Yep. Okay, um, I suppose I just a, a, a quick introduction would be a good thing to um, kind of set the table. Uh, I'm based in Norway, in Trondheim in Norway. Uh, you can hear by my accent I'm not Norwegian. I'm, I'm from Southern Africa. Um, I have a, a, an online ministry. I'm one of those thousands of instructors on YouTube. Um, and uh, each each weekday morning, Monday to Friday, I, I put out a program, short 15 minutes. It's called Our Daily Timothy Time. So that's where my ministry is at the moment, um, bar my family, my wife and my two children. So um, that's a little bit of background. And 
uh, tonight's message is is kind of piggybacking off one of the messages I did for our daily Timothy time a number of days ago, and I'll get into the title of that shortly. Um, just a little bit about my family. I, I am a family man. I've got two young daughters, Maud, who's five, and Myrtle, who's three, and we've got a third little uh, little youngster on the way, uh, uh, June September. So that's, um, I don't know whether to laugh or cry, I'm not sure yet, but uh, we've got a third one coming. And um, yeah, so my main ministry really is to my, to my family, and that's, that's been quite a test so far. Anyway, that's enough about my family and about me and my ministry. Um, let's get into what I want to cover tonight. My, my topic and title is a little bit of a strange one. Um, it's not often spoken about in, in grace circles. Um, so I, I'm going to venture into this topic. I'm going to do my best with it. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but um, the scriptures that surround the title will no doubt edify you. And uh, it'll be just it'll be nice to move around the scripture as grace preachers normally do. So the title to the message tonight is called Babes and Tattoos. Now, I'm gonna, I'll elucidate a little bit more on that because it, it can come across as a bit of a strange title. Um, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this in a two-tiered system. I'm going to aim this lesson at anybody that's going through Grace School of the Bible. You might pick up some things on how I'm going to approach this lesson. So in, in one way, it's going to be nice for the GSB students. And in another way, if you're not a GSB student, that's okay. But um, uh, you, you will, my delivery is going to be stock standard, how I've been taught by none other than Richard Jordan. So here we go. Um, when, in, in grade school of the Bible, you learn how to approach people. It's the cold soap system. So I don't know who I'm actually talking to here. I can see a bunch of faces. I don't know all of you uh, uh, folks. And I don't know where you all are at. So I've, I've kind of, it's a difficult one. So if, I don't know where you're at. You could be a babe in Christ, where my message is actually aimed at. Or you could be a faithful, mature saint. Um, and, and looking at Shorewood, this is a Shorewood uh, uh, um, Zoom meeting. Shorewood saints, in my mind, are pretty. They they like the Ephesian church. They've they they faithful, mature saints. So I don't know where each one of you are at. Obviously, I know a certain a few of you where you are at, but um, that's the whole cold soap thing in my um, uh, 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 understanding. Right. I'm going to go into my opening statement uh, uh, for tonight. And it, re and, it, and it says follows. As saints, we are not automatically perfect upon believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. And when I, when I use that word perfect, I don't mean perfect in, in the sense of sinless perfection, but rather being mature. I think a lot of, lot of you saints have understood that, so I don't need to elaborate any more on that. Um, rather... We are, uh, um, rather, the Bible calls us babes in Christ. And then there's a verse in, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. Uh, I'm not going to quote the whole verse, but the latter part of it, it says that the man of God be perfect. Now that takes time. So when you're a babe in Christ, you're not automatically a mature saint. It takes time. And, and this opening statement will lead into where I'm going to go into with my message today titled Babes and Tattoos. My purpose statement going into this message. I want to inform and persuade any babes in Christ listening tonight and via a, a recorded message in the future. That as saints, we ought to, and everybody should know this verse already, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And this is in light of the issue of tattoos. Okay, 
Now, why on earth am I bringing up tattoos? Well, sadly, I've got tattoos. And when I do the Our Daily Timothy Time, some of my tattoos are exposed. So I dealt with the issue of tattoos the other day. And I thought, listen, I've got a bit of material. Let me build on it and share it with, with, with the group tonight. Maybe you can use it in your congregation. Maybe you've got family members that are thinking about getting one. Maybe you've got, you know, someone that has a tattoo that wants to finish it. And maybe this will be of some help. So let's, let's look at that purpose statement very quickly, just once again. When I, the, the, the opening part of that, that purpose statement, there's a general, uh, uh, um, the general theme of it is to inform and persuade. How am I going to persuade the gentle listener? Via the scripture. We let the word of God do the work of God. And, and that's how it is. And to inform. I've got seven different points that I'd like to cover. Hopefully if time allows I can get through those. Um, and then the, the specific target here. Is b a, a babes in Christ. Now I'm going to elaborate a bit more what a babe in Christ is so that if you don't know, you'll walk away from this video going, okay, I know what a babe in Christ is and where to go from there. And then, and then thirdly and lastly in the purpose statement, um, yeah, to use the word thesis is quite scary, but I, I, it, I, I can't think of any other word. The thesis behind t tonight's time uh, is, is us as saints, we ought to... As Romans 12 said, that verse I had there, Romans chapter 12, of, of, of verse 2, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So let, let's dig in a little bit. I've got seven points I want to cover. Number one, who is a babe in Christ? The second point I want to get, I want to drive home with, with you folk tonight is that that idea of presenting your body. We're going to look at some scriptures and build on that. So you get an idea about that. I'm going to move on to the third uh, uh, point, third bullet point uh, being a living sacrifice. We'll look at that and get a bit more of an idea on that. Maybe it's, maybe you've never, maybe you've never really concentrated with this verse and, and you're going, well, what do those things mean? We'll look at them. The fourth area I want to look at is that word holy. How do, what does that mean for you and me, you and I? We'll look at that. Then I, want to, then I want to knock on the door of acceptable unto God. That's a really interesting one. That's, um, I think to me, with this topic of tattoos, it's a, that's, that's, the, that's the important one in, in, in my mind and in my thinking going forward here. And then there's the issue of reasonable service. Now, I suppose we could spend hours and hours uh, looking at verses. I've got a few verses to submit to the listener so that you can um, take it away to your own personal study and see how it is for you. And then lastly, I want to close off with a dispensational overview of the topic of tattoos. Now, it's not my intention to go deep into that. I'm going to present some, some thought so that you can go away from here going, okay, well, wow, that was interesting. Or you might just totally disagree and go, well, I'm not even going to entertain that. But uh, point number seven is not, not really where I want to spend a lot of time, but it, it's going to be a dispensational look at tattoos. I found it quite interesting. I hope I can get through it tonight. Um, right, so who is a babe in Christ? Let's run through that. Now, you know, for some of you folk, this is old hat. This is stuff you know already, but maybe there's someone here that needs to hear this. So, who is a babe in Christ? And where do we read about being a babe in Christ? Carl, are you just making it up as you go along? No, I'm not. We read about it in the scripture. So, a babe in Christ, in, in my thinking, is somebody that's just been saved. So, how do you get saved? Well, you, you, you get called by Paul's My Gospel. You, 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 you recognize that you're a sinner, that there's a, a, a Savior. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to earth, lived a sinless life, went to Calvary's cross, shed his blood, gave up the ghost, died, was buried, and rose again the third day. 
you, you, you compute that, okay, I'm a sinner, there's a, there's a, Jesus Christ died for my sins, and then through a one-time response of faith, you trust in that, you rest in it, you rely exclusively on it, and that moment you're saved. So that's, that's how you would become a babe in Christ. Now another angle on um, the, the, that title, a babe in Christ, a babe in Christ in my current level of understanding, could also include somebody that's been saved for, let's just say, a number of years. That's been going to an assembly, going to the weekly, midweek Bible study, but they've just never progressed due to not rightly dividing the word of truth. And they're just kind of stuck in limbo and, you know, you, you, you sit down with them, and you talk to them and you give them two or three verses and they don't know what to do with them. And they look at you and their eyes glass over. That's a babe in Christ. Now, that's my current level of, level of understanding what a babe in Christ is. So, it's someone that's not mature. Saved, yes, but not, they haven't, they haven't used that, um, you know, the verse that comes to mind for me is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. You know, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. They haven't gone through that edification process yet. They haven't started in Romans and laid their foundation. They haven't done that yet. So, where do we read about babes in Christ in God's word? Well, we read about uh, uh, babes in Christ in Paul's epistles. Uh, if you've got your Bible, I'm sure a lot of you will have your Bible with you. You can quickly just turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, if you will. I'm just going to pick up from verse 2. Uh, and it says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. Have I got the right verse? No, hang on, verse 1, forgive me. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even unto babes in Christ. So there's that phrase, babes in Christ. Another place you can visit to, to get a bit more of an understanding of that, you can go over into the Hebrew epistles. Now, what on earth are the Hebrew epistles? Well, the Hebrew epistles are simply Hebrews to Revelation, which is in the, uh, uh, in the New Testament. Uh, of the Bible, it, how it's laid out for us, and uh, if I can find the verse, I'll share it to you. First Peter chapter two, verse two. I'm not going to turn and read it. Jot that down, and in your own study time, have a look at that. That's another place you'd read about it. And then, if you come with me to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter five, if you will, Hebrews five. Uh, I'm going to read through this passage. So if, you, if you've got a Bible there, Hebrews chapter 5, 12, for when, now again, Hebrews, if, you, if, you, if you're a babe in Christ listening here, Hebrews is, is a book that's written for our learning. It's not written directly to us, it's for us. Now we could exp expound a lot more on that, but due to time, I'll leave it at that. So here's the verse, for when, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful. Now stop for a moment. Those of you folk that have children, you understand babies don't eat meat. They, they, they're on the bottle or they're, or they're on mom's boob. They drink milk. That's a, that's a given. So let's carry on with the verse here. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. And then it goes on into verse 14, where the, where the, where the author of the book of Hebrews, which is, which is, um, there's a couple of different opinions on who wrote Hebrews. That's not my intention to go there. But in verse 14, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so i think you've got the uh, you you can now understand that when i when i use that term babe 
in Christ. It's not me just daydreaming out a name. It's scriptural. It's in the word of God. We see it in Paul's epistles as well as over in the Hebrew epistles. And the idea there, babe in Christ, they're still on the milk bottle. They're not cutting rump steak and eating that just yet. It takes time. Point number uh, um Another, another point I want to bring up about a babe in Christ is if you go over to, in the book of Romans, you get, you get to that last pillar, if I can call it that, of, that, um, of the book of Romans. Roman, Romans is broken up into four sections, if you will. That last section, it expects you to have gone through the first opening bit of Romans. And then there's a, uh, the last pillar is that one of application. And in chapter 14, it speaks about the weaker brother. Now, the weaker brother, the weaker brother, they, 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 they don't know how to use the doctrine. You know, they might have heard it, but they just, they, they not, they just can't, you know, like the little children just learning the ropes, so to speak. So the weaker brother could also fall under that, that uh, label or title as a babe in Christ. If you can understand what I'm, what I'm trying to drive at here. And um, point number two, when we look at Romans chapter uh, uh, 12, that verse that I read in my purpose statement, Romans chapter 12, I'm going to quickly turn there and just read there quickly. I should know this off by heart, but, I, but um, it slips my mind, so I'm going to read the passage. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Point number two is that idea, or not the idea, that where we read there, present your bodies. Now, present your bodies. When I sat down to do the outline of this message, and I was look, just reading some scripture, a, a passage for me that, that popped up, present your bodies, present your bodies. I thought of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what popped up for me, that, that, that present your bodies, study to show thyself. Can you, can, you, can you join the dots here? Can you see where I'm going with that? So that's, that's what I thought of immediately. Um, and then, next down, uh, okay, so 2 Timothy 2.15. Then 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 to 16. Now, in the Our Daily Timothy time that I do each weekday morning, our theme verse is 1 Timothy 4.13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, and it goes down to verse 16. Um, I'm going to quickly turn there and read this to you. First uh, Timothy four. If you got a Bible, turn with me to First Timothy chapter four. Uh, let me just read from thirteen to sixteen till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate on these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. Take heed unto thyself and unto, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That verse 16, take heed unto thyself. Present your bodies, take heed of thyself. It's an interesting link that. I hope you can see that. Now, Another point I, I just want to bring up, if you've been around Richard Jordan for a long time, uh, I just saw recently Richard in a, in a in conference once again, and I, I really enjoyed it, where, where, where Richard draws the circles of, the, of how we made up as a human being, you know, the spirit, soul, and body. So that issue, now again, if you're a babe in Christ listening to this message, you might be thinking to yourself, present your bodies. It's really interesting to understand, and I'm not going to go into detail, but... You, uh, um, as saints, as maturing saints, we need to understand the makeup of the body, and it's and it's worthwhile just very quickly bringing it up. Spirit, your mind, soul, your heart—that's the seedbed of your emotions. 
from what I, from my current understanding. And then there's the physical body. So it's a three part. Now, some people go, oh, well, you know, how do you back that up with scripture? Well, an easy verse to shoot to. I'm not going to go there. I'll just mention it to you so you can jot it down and you can visit it yourself. Would be uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Another interesting verse would be Hebrews. Hebrews chapter, what did I write down here? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. That's another interesting one when you look at the spirit, soul, and body. Now, it might take a bit of reading to see it, but it's there. Which leads me on to bullet point number three. But before I go there, I've just missed out one point here. Present your bodies. I, I want to I wanna put this to you as a, as, a, as a collective here. How were the Gentiles doing back in Genesis 11 around the Tower of Babel? Well, we read about that in Romans chapter 1. And, I'll, and, I, and let me read this to you. Romans chapter 1, 24. You know, when it comes to the issue of your, of your, of that, of, of your body, Romans chapter 1, 24. Let's just see what it says here. Wherefore God gave them up, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So the, gen, so the Gentiles, they're not doing so good. Well, they weren't doing so good when it came to their, their bodies. Now, you could, you could, you could really dig in. And try and work and study out what they were actually doing. That's not my intention. But the, I'm just trying to show you Gentiles, body, what were they doing? Were, 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 they, were they presenting their bodies, a living sacrifice? I, I would submit to you, no. Not at all. Let's move on. Point number three, a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, a babe in Christ, the first book that any any babe in Christ should go to, and sadly, in, in what I've seen in my ministry, uh, dealing with friends and people that are in positions in churches, it's not often that that denominations would take their congregation, especially the 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 the, the, the new folk in there, the babes in Christ. You, you don't often read or hear of the of the pastors taking those folk into the book of Romans and establishing them how Paul wants us to be established. You don't, you, you don't, or maybe I'm just missing it. They, you know, I, I, I had, I've got a friend that's in a, um, an interdenominational church in South Africa. He's taking his crew through John, first and second and third John. And I'm going like, how on earth did you arrive at that? Anyway, he, he, that's where he's taking his, his, the, the, the new folk. And I'm scratching my head going, well, how, how do you expect them to get established? I, you don't get answers. So, anyway, a living sacrifice. Now, if, you've, if a babe in Christ ought to start in the book of Romans and build his inner man. So, when you, when you do that, you go through chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's that first pillar. When you get into that second pillar, when you learn about your, the, your identification in Christ, chapter 6, 7, and 8, you, you learn about, hey, your, your old man is dead. Now, it's not my intention to run, at, for, from, from a time point of view, to run through all the verses in Romans 6. Romans 6 is, is, um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is what a wonderful chapter. There's so much going on in there. My point is, there's that positional change. You were in Adam, now you're in Christ. Learn who you are. And I'm going to read you a quote from Grace School of the Bible that I got from Richard. And it's, it's actually taped up on my, on my drawer here. You, uh, um, realize, and quote, realize who you are. You are the official representative and spokesman for God the Son. And I'm just reading it off my thing here. But when you go out, and look, uh, out the world is going gonna, is gonna to react to you the way it reacted to him, the Lord Jesus Christ. In this age we live, this is the age of the official rejection of God the Son. He's off in exile, sending a message of grace and peace through his ambassadors to a world that, de that declared war on him. End of quote. Now that was from GSB, that was from the ambassadorship class. If any of you are going through GSB... You might have gone through that already. Any uh, uh, grads of GSB, this is, you, you would have learned all that stuff. 
The, the point is, you need to know who you are. And once you understand that, that that's, in fact, let me take you to one verse in, in Romans 6. Romans chapter 6. Uh, I marked out here verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So now you're a living sacrifice. Likewise, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there's, there's, there's your living sacrifice. Also another verse that just comes to mind now would be Galatians 2.20. Um, I'm just trying to remember how it goes. Uh, Galatians, you know, again, I should know this off by heart, and normally I can, but I'm a bit nervous right now. Um, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's a verse that comes to mind again. Um, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. So there, So getting back to Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 1, a living sacrifice. I hope that those verses I've shared there can... can Highlight it for you and, 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 and give you a, 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 better, a better understanding of that. Which moves me on to point number four. Holy. Now, in my, in my time of prepping this lesson and looking at this verse and thinking about it. Holy. There's, one, there's a couple of verses I can take you to. I'm just going to take you to one. And I submit to you that that, that, that idea of holy would mean that you're a... It's talking about you as a saint. Romans chapter 1 verse 7 comes to mind for me. Uh, for those of you that don't have a Bible handy, let me read it for you. Um, so you can hear it. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, there's another verse. I'll give you one more verse. So come with me over to Romans 15. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. What verse did I write down here? Romans 15. Romans 15, 25. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Verse 26. For it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Now, those are the little flockers. And, and again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here about the little flock. But the little flock and the church, the body of Christ, if you are not aware of it, are two separate agencies. That's quite important. And I bump into that all the time within Christendom. There's a failure to separate those two, to distinguish things that differ, as we've all heard that terminology. Moving on to point number five. Point number five, acceptable unto God. Now, acceptable unto God. You're in Romans 15 now. Back up to verse 4, Paul writes this here. He says, um, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have a hope. See we, where it says there, uh, whatsoever things were written aforetime were for our learning. So now, accept, holy, acceptable unto God. Well, what, what is acceptable unto God? Now, in light of tonight's topic, babes, and tattoos. We're talking about the issue of of of, of tattoos is the is where we're going here. Getting a tattoo or finishing a tattoo job on your arm or your body or whatever. Um, what is well, how does God view that? How? Well, obviously we've got to go to the Word of God. Now, where 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 do you where where would you find information on that? My father the other day, after listening to the, the Timothy time, was like, wow, Carl, I didn't even know that was in the Bible. So let me take you to the verses that indicate to us what God thinks of cuttings. Now, when you get a tattoo, hopefully none of you guys have got tattoos, but when you get a tattoo, it, it cuts your skin, leaves ink behind, hence you get the tattoo. Come with me back into time past. We're going to go into uh, Leviticus, the book of Leviticus. Let's quickly have a look at this, Leviticus 19, and let's just see what God thinks about this. 
And also, you, you know, the, uh, if you want to know about the attributes of God, you know, here it says acceptable unto God. Um, I've got a little chart here. If, uh, at the end of this message, I'll, um, I'll speak a little bit about the paperwork I've got here. Anybody that wants these notes, I can gladly share it with you. You know, we all understand the attributes of God. He's sovereign. He's love. He's eternal love. Immutable. He has perfect veracity. He's omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Uh, um, his righteousness is the principle of his integrity. He, he, his justice stands God, stands God for the, the righteous, uh, for God's righteousness. So we understand all that stuff about God. But, um, and I don't mean to skip over that lightly. I mean, this is, it's, um, it's stuff that we should spend time thinking and meditating on. But, um, I want to look at that thing about being acceptable unto God in light of tattoos. Uh, Leviticus 19.28. Leviticus 19.28. Right. Uh, I suppose you can pick up from verse 26 if you uh, want to jot that down. But I want to pick up from verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. And that Lord is in caps, so that's Jehovah. Uh, another place you can visit, you can go Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Le Leviticus 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their forehead, neither shall, shall they sh shave off the corner of their beard, nor make cuttings in their flesh. Now I've got, and in another verse you can visit, is Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. I'm not going to go there, but you can jot that down and have a look at that. So, acceptable unto God. So, do you think tattoos are acceptable unto God, even in, to, in this dispensation of grace? Moving on to bullet point number six, your reasonable service. Now, just I, I read you a quote from Richard Jordan a bit earlier. Just remember who you are. You, 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 your old man is dead and, and you're a new creature in Christ. Uh, uh, Second Corinthians 5 would tell you that you're a new creature. You're an ambassador uh, of Jesus Christ. You know, you, 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 that old man of yours is dead. And we, gotta, we, 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 we ought to walk in newness of life. And I'm just looking down at my notes here. Reasonable service. Reasonable service. Romans 8 would tell you that you're a son of... In fact, come with me to Romans 8. It's amazing how we're spending a bit of time in the book of Romans. That foundational book. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And uh, where did I write? Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Folks, you and I are, 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 are as, the, as the verse says, sons of God. You know, we ought, to, we ought to reason like we are sons of God, as ambassadors for Christ, as new creatures. Not to think like we used to think, and as Romans chapter 1, as the Gentiles there were thinking. You know, we've we got we to gotta renew our mind. Paul, often, Paul tells us that a few times in his epistles. So... Reasonable. It means you've got to think about you got to, any situation now. We're dealing with tattoos. Should I get one? You've got to sit and reason. You know, I'm. I. This is who I am in Christ. Is it gonna? If I get the tattoo, I'm not gonna lose my salvation. But you know what? Let's think of uh, what about the weaker brother? If there's somebody else next to me that I might influence, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's a, well you, you don't have to think very far on that one. It's not a good thing. It's not expedient. It doesn't edify, as Paul would tell us. And then uh, the issue of service, reasonable service. Ultimately, we're either going to physically die here or we'll be raptured up. I'd prefer the rapturing personally, but uh, we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ and it's my current level of understanding, and I just submit this to you, you folk here, that, hey, at the judgment seat of Christ, in my understanding, there's, there's, there's three major reviews, if I can say it like that. Uh, your, service is a, uh, your walk is a son, service is a servant, 
And that is the third one. Suffering as a soldier for the, for the Lord Jesus Christ. That tattoo, you know, personally, I think that's, I, I think the Lord, the Lord Jesus is going to call me up on that one. You know, I've got tattoos. I've influenced people. I, you know, <coughs> uh, before I came into the message of grace, before I started to start to understand things, I, I was a grace believer. But I just, I abused my liberty in Christ. Sadly, uh, you know, and and people look, they see the tattoos and it's like, oh, he's one of those guys. He, he's one of those grace guys. He's one of those Bible boys. He's got a tattoo. Hey, it must be cool to get a tattoo. Nothing wrong with getting a tattoo. If I could turn back the clock, I wouldn't even have even entertained going for a tattoo. But here's the thing. At the time, I never had the doctrine in me to go, okay, let me think about this. I didn't. Why didn't I have it? Because I wasn't spending time in the Word of God rightly divided. I knew who my apostle was. Yes, I did. I knew that I didn't have to pay tithes. That was a big thing for me coming out of religion. Uh, um, I, I knew that I had this freedom, but I abused it. Because I didn't, under, I didn't have sound doctrine built up in my inner man is the point I'm trying to drive home here. So the result was, I got one tattoo. And we understand that the flesh is greedy and one's not good enough. You must go for a second one, Carl. And then the second one's not good enough either. You must go for a third one and a fourth and blah, blah, blah. So the flesh is greedy. If you, if you, if you don't understand and reckon and, and, and know who you are in Christ, and how do you get to know that? The book. As Richard has said a number of times, I've heard him, we're, we're the people of the book. Get, it, get in the book, let the book get in you. Then at least when these things come at you, they present themselves, you can go, oh, okay, uh, it'll be cool to get one, but maybe not. Maybe we'll just put that away and let's go this direction. So, um, and that issue of service, one more last point. In November of 2020, I did my first lesson, if I can call it here, on this uh, Zoom meeting. And I introduced Romans chapter 1, you know, uh, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. We looked at that verse. And um, Paul, a servant. So there's that idea of servanthood. Reasonable service. You're walking as a servant, servicing other members of the church, the body of Christ, as, as I see it in, in, in my thinking. Moving on to my last point, I'm just looking at the time. My last point here is a dispensational look at the, at the issue of tattoos, right? We are, we've just read in time past in the law what the Lord thinks about tattoos. Today, I personally, if I understand the scriptures correct, God would have the same view on that. However, if you did get a tattoo, you're not going to lose your salvation. But at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to stand there before the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not sure how the speech will go, but um, you, you, you've got to be accountable for it. Then what about the ages to come? So what's the big deal about a tattoo? We've looked at time past. We're looking today. What about the ages to come? Now, again, my next few lines, my next few uh, sentences here. I don't want to say they're speculation, but it's just something that's popped into my mind. Tattoos. In our culture today, where whichever country you're in, tattoos are so normal. If you don't have a tattoo, there's something wrong with you. I think you, uh, maybe that's a bit of a harsh statement, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. Tattoos are normal. It's okay to have a tattoo. It's even okay for girls to have tattoos. So, when we raptured out, and the time of Jacob's trouble happens, after that, the second advent of Christ, hang on, let me just, let me back up a bit here. We get raptured out, you go into the, you, uh, the, Daniel chapter 9 takes place. Uh, uh, the, man, is it the man of sin confirms the covenant. 
and then you go into the tribulation period, right? Now you've got the mark of the beast. Now I've got a number of scriptures out of the book of Revelation. Um, Revelation 20 verse 4, Revelation 14, 11, etc, etc. That speak about the mark. Now my question is, you know, God warned Israel about cutting yourself and marking yourself, right? Now, in the ages to come, I just think to myself, was, was God not, did he not have that in mind? Don't do that, Israel, because later on, the, the, there's gonna, this is what's going to take place. And if you look at our culture, having tattoos is so, is so normal now that when we raptured out, do you not think that the folks going into that time of Jacob's trouble will, will look at tattoos and go, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with the tattoo. Let's get the mark on the head. On the, you know, read the scriptures. So that's just something I want to leave with you folk to think about. So it's a, I shouldn't actually end off with a, a question mark, but th that's that's something to think about in the dispensational settings. Tattoos. Do they have any significance in the ages to come? And in my closing statement for any Grace School of the Bible student or grad would be this. Grace looks at you and says, here you are. What are you going to do? Now, we, we're talking tattoos now. What are you going to do? Are you going to get the tattoo or are you going to leave it? And, and that's uh, uh, gr grace. Gr gr it, it's, it's not going to bang you on the head and say, you're wrong. Shouldn't do that. But if you've got sound doctrine built in you, you're going to come to the place where you're going to go, hey, I can do it. But is it expedient and is it going to edify my brother next to my neighbor next to me? And um, that's where I'll, I'll leave it at that for tonight. It's a big topic. There's a lot of scriptures here. There's, there's lots going on in that one verse we've looked at. I trust and hope that uh, it made some type of sense to you, the listeners. And uh, any Grace School of the Bible students, if you want to have a look, not, not that I was a, I wasn't John Fustigian, I didn't get straight A's. I, trust me, I didn't ask Michael Taylor, I didn't get the A's. Um, but I got through the school, and if you want to see the layout of my notes, the outline, if it helps you in any way, I will gladly get that to you via, via email, etc. And uh, there's a list of all the verses. I've missed some of the verses out if you want to look at them. They all written on the on the the sheet there. It's all there. If you want to get a copy of that, you may. And that was some of the chart work that uh, I was taught by a faithful saint going through Grace School of the Bible, none other than Pastor Richard Jordan. So if you're looking for a copy of that, it's not my work. And this is just this is Richard teaching me. This is two Timothy two verse two in live and unplugged. So, if you're looking for the notes, I will gladly get them over to you. Thank you for listening. Any thoughts? I'm going to turn off now. I don't want to hear them. <laughs> I'm, yeah, anyway. Thanks for listening, folks. Carl, I totally agree with you. Very good message. Better than expected. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, John. Mr. John Handel again. Uh, thank you... One that I did, did mute me this time. Amen. Thanks for joining up, John, and thanks for the, the encouragement there for Carl. Hey. Now, if anyone else has any comments, feel free yeah, to I um, say it. And then if, if there, I know there's a lot of people, so if you want to raise your hand, and then I can know at least that I got my hand. wants to do it. And um, But Gail, go ahead. You're unmuted already. Go ahead. Yeah, about the tattoos. All that's wood, hay, and stubble. That's all it is. It doesn't profit you anything. I felt cool for that's about... Just, two, that's, that's all fleshly. Yeah. It was great for about half an hour afterwards. And then it ran... And then it, the, the, the whole thing was like, what's the point of this? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's Thank good. I, I've had a lot of... I've got a 15 year old and a 12 year old and so they're getting to that age where they're some of their friends are talking about things like tattoos or you know things like smoking and there's, there's gonna be a lot of these topics and as they grow up where 
you know, what are you going to do? And sometimes the question is, well, is it a sin? And is it, you know, where, where does it say you can't do this specific thing, right? But the verse that I thought of, Carl, during your message was um, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy yeah, Ghost, yeah. which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And that idea of you're, you're holy, you're set apart, um, you're reasonable, I mean, you're reasonable service, all that stuff, and that idea that you, you know, you're, you're in, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost indwelling you. So there's a lot of responsibility there. Um, with how you treat your body. Mm. Um, uh, Catherine. Let me raise my hand. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that message. And um, I used that Leviticus for so many years with my students who wanted to get tattoos and they just didn't know it was in the Bible. I'm not saying they're believers, but when they saw that it was actually in the Bible, I pray it made them think twice and the girls I mean they all wanted tattoos but forgive me if you said this but when you were pointing out that we are spirit soul and body you may have said it and I missed it but my favorite verse is first Thessalonians 5 um, 23 the very God of peace sanctify you holy w-h-o-l-l-y and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't know if that's in your notes or something, but... Y yes, Catherine, I, I it, it, that, yes. That, that verse is in my notes, but due to sheer um, sheer panic and fright, I didn't get around to mentioning that verse. Oh, well... But it's in the notes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, Richard or Charlie, whichever one's going to talk. <laughs> Well, if Charlie starts talking, I'm leaving because <laughs> he's a dog. <laughs> but I, well, for tattoos, I mean, for me, I I never wanted a tattoo. I I thought that's ridiculous. Somebody's going to write on my skin, and I can't even rub it off. I I I've never had a tattoo. But if you're going to get a tattoo, if you're really determined to get one. What would be wrong with getting Galatians 2.20 tattooed? Just say Galatians 2.20. And that would raise somebody's, you know, oh, why has he got Galatians 2.20? Maybe they'll look it up. You know, I mean, if you're going to get one, I, you know, I, I think it's ridiculous to get a tattoo. And I, I'd be trying to wipe it off when I take a shower or something, but it won't come off. But uh, anyhow, yeah, I think if you're going to have to get one, what about Galatians 2.20? That would be the one I would pick. But uh, I wanted to ask too, Carl, those glasses, I, <laughs> I've never seen glasses like that. And I wore glasses almost all my life until I had surgery. <clears throat> but you got a square lens and a round lens. Yes, they sir. must be custom made. They were the cheapest ones, not custom made. <laughs> Here in Scandinavia, they like all funny things. And it's a nice icebreaker because you can say the prophecy and the mystery. Things that differ. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see now. I said, is that one of them round and one square? But yeah, that was intentional. That's how they were just made, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think over here you'd have to have them custom made to get that. <laughs> and, uh, but that's quite unique. Anyhow, thank you. I, I enjoyed your message. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for the encouragement. Thank you. Uh, Alex. Yeah, um, thank you, Carl. Appreciate that. I do not have a tattoo, but I remember years ago, the, the family, we traveled out west. We drove through um, uh, South Dakota uh, right during Sturgis, right during Biker Week, and we went to Mount Rushmore, and there was chrome and leather everywhere. And I remember there was this gentleman, he, he was like 6'8", probably 250 pounds of pure muscle. He had tats all over his face. He had tats all over his arms. And he was one rough looking guy, but he was part of a Christian motorcycle ministry. And he was out there passing out tracks. And I thought, you know, 
I don't think he'll ever get those tattoos removed, but he took the opportunity to reach a, a group that I would never have an opportunity to reach. So mm-hmm. I guess I just want folks to, to consider, okay, if you have a tattoo, well, use it. I mean, you know, you might be able to reach people that uh, other people won't be able to reach. Yeah, yeah. Great, great comment. Good point. Yeah. You know, I, I think you think about people who've had before they're saved the things that you do and the mistakes you make, and a lot of people, when it, once they get saved, the testimony they have of their salvation and sharing what they went through in their past is very powerful for a lot of people. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah, ben, I don't see how, I don't see how to raise my hands, but I'll just go ahead. My uh, people like Alex said, people that have you know that that's the life that came out of, and they can they can speak into that life after the believers in ways that people that never were in that life could. could. But uh, I just want to say about the I appreciate what Carl's teaching. Uh, ben has two beautiful young daughters. I can say this to them. I could never say it to Charlie. But I tell I tell young people, why would you put a a, a a bumper sticker on a Ferrari? I don't see any, you know you make make them understand the value that they are, and why in the world would you stick a bumper sticker on the back end of a of a cool machine like that? So kind of a useless thing. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte, did you have something to say? Uh, A couple of things, uh, Carl. Thank you very much for that message. Uh, I really appreciate how you delivered the message. And Okay, we're going to Hebrews, but Hebrews is not written to us, but here's an application. And that's a good thing to do when you're ministering to others as you go through time past, but now ages to come. Sometimes we just go to the verse and we just use the verse. So I appreciated that. And I thought that was an interesting point about the mark of the beast in the ages to come connected with markings today, something that they would be used to. So again, thank you for that. And I can use this message because I have nieces and nephews are millennials. They were raised in grace, understand right division, know who they are in Christ. Uh, But I'm on the grace. And so they're, the world is pulling into that. And here's something, a way to just listen to the message. You know, no, no, just here. Let me send this message to you and let me know what you think. Mm. To help them try to think, even motivate them to renew your mind. So thank you for that. It was very useful. Maybe they won't do the tattoo or not. Because I know I have one who's thinking about it right now. <laughs> and and, she, and she, when she called to tell me, it was a shock value. She wanted to shock me. So I didn't. I wanted to go off, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to fall into her little trick, but uh, I could use that message to send to her. Thank you. Uh, uh, Lord. Thanks, Charlotte. Uh, yeah, Carl, um, just so everyone knows before people start signing off, all these messages are recorded. So if you want a, uh, you want me to send you the link for the message to listen to it again or share it with somebody, just let me know. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat below. And also... Carl, you should put your email in the chat below so that if people wanted those documents or your notes, then you can just email them too. Okay, I'll do that right away. Um, uh, Mike, by the way, did you want to say something? You're unmuted. No, I didn't know I was unmuted. <laughs> okay. Well, you're nice and quiet, so it's okay. Then. <laughs> uh, if there's anyone else that has uh, some comments or something you'd like to share, feel, feel free to do that. Unmute yourself. Just want to say thanks, brother. Appreciate the appreciate the teaching time. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. Thank you, Carl. Uh, what one thing I would throw about throw in about the tattoos? Did God forget to make something on our bodies? You know, like we need a note. We need to add some to to make them make ourselves better. That's all I'm going to say about tattoos. Thank you. You're great, Carl. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, David. Um, just a quick, um, during the meeting, I couldn't help but notice Brother Ted Fellow staring at me. <laughs> Ted, 
being a, a former Grace School of the Bible grad, it was uh, when I was looking at you, I was uh, quite fearful because, uh, you know, um, <laughs> you guys are from, you, you're the original class, you know, and uh, yeah, it was quite intimidating, Ted. Thank you. <laughs> He's a gentle giant. Oh, you're muted. Hold on, Ted, you're muted. He is a teddy bear. We can't hear you, Ted. You're still muted. There, Mike. Can you hear me now? Okay. I, I lost, somehow I lost my picture, so I was trying to figure out where, where I went, but I could still see everybody else. I've never thought of myself, or I don't know if I ever had anybody tell me that I'm intimidating. So uh, I, I appreciate that, Carl. I appreciate your, your heart to address something that's personal to you. I guess I would say two things in regard to the topic. For a believer who's contemplating, I would, it, it, it's obvious from the book of Leviticus that that was a Gentile tradition, that God was telling Israel to be a different nation because they, didn't, they weren't to adapt the manners of the Gentiles. I would, I would apply Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to a believer thinking about that, that we should not walk um, as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, that it's really a, a Gentile tradition. And for that, for that reason, I would, I would avoid doing that. For somebody that has one, it is not something that you should feel guilty about. It is something that you should use um, as a as a tool, maybe as in your testimony. It's we certainly don't want to make people feel guilty and mm. and and con, and self condemnation because of that. Because it is uh, it it is a discretionary choice, and uh, we should just be be real careful for those that have them to not make them feel guilty. At the same time, it is part of the Gentile culture and the Gentile world that, um, that we've been taken out of. And we have a glorious new identity and a new purpose um, and a new, new uh, service, a new reasonable service. But thank you for the message. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Ted. Anybody else want to say something, feel free to jump in. I'd like to tell everybody about Clear Springs Bible Church. They're having their Southeast Tennessee Grace um, on March 24th to the 26th, their conference, and Richard is going to be there. So, okay, good. Uh, is there a website they can go to to find out about that or any information? Um, let's see. I'm not sure, but I, I bet uh, Sherwood would be able to tell you. Okay. They can go to clearspringsbiblechurch.com. Uh, they, they, the website's the name of the church, see the dot .com or dot .org. I don't remember right off. Also, next week, not this weekend, but the next weekend is the meeting in Southern California, Brother Verstegan's ministry, uh, in San Juan Capistrano. That uh, will be uh, on they will brought, uh, nice. put it on the internet. I don't know if it'll be Facebook or the website, probably Facebook. And uh, Brother uh, David Reed and I will be, will, both will be two of the speakers. So, Rick. And my son Rick from Arizona and Dave Stout from up in Oregon. Uh, so it'll be, be a good cross section of different different speakers. And Brother Stegan's minister there, they reach out across the southeastern part of the United States. So a lot, most most of you know John. And uh, so I, that's always a great. I tell people I'm not the brightest bulb in the, in the, in the closet, but I'm not the dumbest either. When you live in Chicago, January, you want to go to Florida and, Cal and February, you want to go to California. So for 40 years, we've had Bible conferences in Florida and California. So uh, I appreciate the, uh, <laughs> the opportunity to be a part of those things. But it is, and it is wonderful to be able to fellowship, you know, you know, 
Yeah. I know John's ministry ministering to the folks in, in, in Australia um, by way of the Zoom and so forth, and, and just to be able to reach out around the world uh, with these different ministries, and for you to be able to participate in these Bible conferences. In the past, you had to get the CDs or DVDs, wait, you know, three or four months to get them, and now you can just write right there in person. So praise the Lord for that. Mm-hmm. Thanks again, Carl, for the for the for the study. And then before we, we, we leave, we should all give Carl a wave. He wrote a song about how we wave, so I think we should all wave to Carl. Yeah, forward wave, that's right. Come on, get those hands up. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Carl. <laughs> Thanks again, Carl. Great. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, Carl, Thanks, you're our, uh, Shorewood, our Shorewood East part of our church, for sure. You're way over on the pond, but you're definitely part of our, our assembly, so it's yeah. good to teach. If I could say something about the tattoos. Yeah. Um, I had a young daughter. She's grown and has. Uh, we're fixing to be great-grandparents. Wow. But some advice, if, if you have opportunity... Um, about a young person getting a tattoo and it's a a woman or a young man, if they're just bound to get a tattoo, advise them to just get something that might be tactful and then make sure it's something that can be covered for like a future job you may want to have. That might, you might be able to have a little influence that way because if they're bound to do it, they're going to do it anyway. And the more you fight them with it, you know, you might just be the the factor that makes them really go out and do it because you're going to be too hard and too animate on something that's probably not going to really matter anyway. You know, there's enough to feel guilty about and in this world. And if a tattoo is the worst thing you've got going for you, why, you really don't have many problems. <laughs> but, um but I think um, uh, some of the advice that we heard there, um, it's, I think it's going to be one of those things that's going to burn. Um, when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, it's not even going to be an issue. That's just going to burn. Um, that, that's what I tell the young people. Yeah, when you say don't do it, that's when they want to do it. Yeah, when you say don't do it, that's when they want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't start with the face tattoo. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> you do, don't start with the face. <laughs> uh, Philippe, I saw you had your hand up. You want you want to unmute yourself. Yeah, um, I just also want to say a thank you to Mrs. Jordan. I just saw her there that um, her ministry, uh, her Bible studies on YouTube, my children have been very, very um, blessed by your ministry. Um, we got seven kids, and every week they they watch your Bible studies uh, at least twice a week to help them grow in the faith of right division. So I just want to say thank you for your ministry. Probably, you know, it reaches all around the world, and it's been a great blessing to us. And also, Richard Jordan, thank you very much. Um, we watch, I, you know, we've learned a lot from you also. So thank you from down under. Thank you from the Australians down here. And... Um, Thank you for your ministry. It reaches further than you probably think. Yeah. You're welcome. I, that su- surprises me that anybody watches what I teach. <laughs> so, I'll uh, be honest with you. When I when I, when we started watching it, I learned I learned more from your ministry to children than I learned twenty years in a Baptist church oh. any day, <laughs> any day. Like well, I, I felt like I had to be a kid again and, and learn like as a baby in Christ as as um as Brother Carl said. After 20 years, I was dumb as a door. I knew, you know, I just knew what the Baptist taught me. But if, you know, if I found myself listening very intently to your Bible, um, to your kids' ministry, and I was a baby in Christ, learning the basics. And, um, you know, so our, our children are really blessed. They listen to it um, at least twice a week, and yeah, they've grown a lot. So thank you so much for your ministry, and um, yeah, thank you for all the, all the great men. Good minister, um, it reaches further than you guys ever could imagine. Yeah, it sure does. Well, and when they get done with mine, go to Barbara Wolke's. And um, uh, okay. I'm not sure if Sherry has any on there, on the online or not, if any of Sherry's lessons are on there. We have a pretty good Sunday school. We have a pretty good group of teachers. And that's our goal, is to get God's word in them, see, let them, see them get saved. 
love the Lord and then to to rightly divide his word and let it mean something to them. So Yeah, the younger they are, the better it is. But and our kids they they get they learn a lot. They know a lot. We have Sherry teaches at a Christian school and I always hear the mom say they get these our kids into the Christian school and they know their Bible and they say you must go to Shorewood Bible Church because you know your Bible. So that's a good testimony. So but yeah, Barbara Wilkie, after they do mine, she's got a few on there too. We did that during COVID and uh, okay. I guess uh, we should have kept going, but. It, All right, I'll definitely look that up. Thank you. I have a comment. This is Nisa. Um, does this presentation tonight give Carl extra credit on his DSP grade? <laughs> <laughs> Are those books you're sealed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great message, Carl. Thank that you. was a great message. Thank you, Bridget. I don't have a tattoo. I don't have a tattoo. Never thought about getting one. But my son, he got a tattoo. And I was surprised and shocked when he got it, you know. When he was born, he had big jaws, big jaws. And so everybody was calling him John, so he wouldn't got a tattoo on his shoulder of a shark. <laughs> so that was kind of funny to me. But a great message. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Uh, can I go to bed, please? Oh, yeah. uh, you're still going <laughs> all-nighter, man. You can't go to bed. You can't go to bed. Just pray for us all. We can all go to bed. Do you want me Why to pray? Close, okay. Go ahead and close us in okay. prayer, Carl. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, this opportunity to preach your word. Uh, and like Ted Fellows said in the beginning, thank you for this platform and this this technology that we can uh, be in touch all across Australia, Norway, America, and all across the United States tonight in the Zoom meeting. We thank you that we live in this time that we can do this. And uh, Lord, uh, any souls that get to listen to this message uh, father i just pray that they can whatever they've heard that they can go back to the scripture and read the verses themselves and be convinced not by what i've had to say but what your word says lord and i, I, I pray this in jesus mighty name amen 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 thanks again Bye, Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Cheers, folks. Thank you, Carl. Bye. Bye, dear. Thank you so much. Wait, Karen. <laughs>